beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. On the second day, God separated the waters to form the seas and the sky. On the third day, God created the land with trees and plants and fruits. Will we ever see land again? Of course. Of course we will. The next day, he put the sun, the moon, and stars in the heavens. And on the fifth day, all the creatures of the sea and of the air. And on the sixth day, all the creatures of the ground. And then, he made us to live in paradise. A number of conditions that respond favorably to cannabis. The number one condition is pain. Uh, cannabis uh, is useful in relieving people's pain. It's particularly effective in relieving pain from connected tissue disorders, from arthritis, from fibromyalgia, from systemic lupus, from reflex sympathetic dystrophy, a whole host of conditions that we don't really understand very well. People seem to get good relief from cannabis. Uh, people are able to decrease the amount of opiates that they're taking and in some instances to stop taking opiates entirely uh, for pain control. It was only in uh, 1937 when Congress enacted the Marijuana Tax Act that imposed uh, a levy of a dollar an, an ounce for the use of medical marijuana that uh, was the beginning of, of the end for marijuana as a medicine in the United States. It was in 1942 that it was totally removed from the U.S. pharmacopoeia or the formulary, but up until 1942, physicians could still write prescriptions for cannabis. So, you know, marijuana hasn't been a medicine for 68 years uh, in this country, but it has been a medicine in the world for 3,000 years. I've been listening to this for me, and I have to take medication or I'll die. Right now I weigh less than 80 pounds. I have all my life. Um, I have support of five of my doctors saying that I am living proof that medical marijuana works. I am completely against legalizing it for everyone, but there is medical purposes for it. And you, and you have synthetic marijuana that's available and other pain It medication. makes me sick. I have tried it and it makes me throw up. Mm -hmm. I have tried all the medications there are mm -hmm. and all the forms that come in, appetite stimulators or steroids. I have muscular dystrophy that's completely against my DNA. I'm sorry to hear my, that. Uh, my question for you is, will you arrest me and my doctors if I get medical marijuana I'm not, I'm not, in, I'm not in favor of medical marijuana being legal So will legal you the have country. me arrested? Hi. How are Excuse you? me. I'm sorry. Will you please answer my question? Will you have? Wait, wait, wait. Are you not going to answer his question, Governor? I, I think I have. I'm not. No, no. He asked you if you were going to arrest. He asked if you were going to arrest patients you? like him, nice Governor. You. You're going to just ignore a person in a wheelchair? Oh, I spoke with him. I know, but he didn't answer his question. All right. Well, this is. Uh, but I think the basic concept that uh, using uh, medical marijuana in the same way with the same controls as other drugs prescribed by doctors. I think that's entirely appropriate. The 19th to the 20th century wrote the first textbook of internal medicine and in that textbook he said that cannabis was the most effective medication for the treatment of migraine headaches and I certainly have a number of people with migraines who get substantial relief or even prevention of their migraines by consumption of cannabis. Other conditions that commonly respond favorably to marijuana include depression. Uh, it helps people with sleep. It helps their appetite. 
Uh, it's also very good in treating uh, GI symptoms, uh, nausea, uh, diarrhea. Uh, it's excellent for treating Crohn's disease. So you actually use marijuana every day? Every single day, and I will do so every day until the day I drop dead. Before you came to the Capitol? Yes. Uh, did you tell Reverend Diaz that? Um, no, but I, I spoke openly about the fact that I medicate myself, and I consider medicating. I medicate myself every morning, I medicate myself throughout the day, and I medicate myself every single evening, just the same way as anybody else does, and just the same way as I did when I got up in the morning taking it, the prescription medication that I was taking at inordinate amounts to keep track of the same issues that I have and I'm using marijuana for. So where do you get your marijuana from? I am, I have, I'm a card-carrying marijuana user in two of the 14 states that it's legal in and I'll plead the fifth as to how I take care of my <laughs> needs where I am. So you, let me ask you then, sure. right now as we were speaking, you have already used marijuana today. See, here's, here's something that's so crazy about this. People don't even, again, don't understand the drug. If you d read any information about it, go back to the 98 study that was commissioned by General McCaffrey under Bill Clinton, we proved for a fact that marijuana doesn't affect everybody the exact same way. People who have illnesses like mine that have traumatic neuropathic illness, we don't get the same euphoria that people who don't have it. A study just came out three months ago from the University of Southern of San Diego in California, commissioned by the government of California for 10 years. They studied marijuana, and they studied surreptitiously so nobody else could know that they were doing it, and that study came back proving unequivocally that it is one of the most efficacious drugs on the planet for the disease that I have, MS. I don't get the same euphoria that other people do. I get neuropathic pain lessening, and that's why I use it. I Three quarters of us think it ought to be legalized if it's for medicinal purposes. It's a very different number if you take that away. Now, here's how medical marijuana could affect the brain and the body. And patients who use it say it works better and in ways that no other medicine works for them. I've got a little animation that'll help bring this home. So let's say you're having aches and pains. It could be in your belly, in your limbs, in your legs. It doesn't frankly matter. When you smoke marijuana, you inhale its gases. Those gases go into your lungs and they fill your lungs. And when they fill your lungs, they pass a chemical called THC, those little green dots into the bloodstream, which is, then is passed throughout the body, getting all kinds of places. Let's look into the nervous system, where so many of the aches and pains are located. And just quickly reminding you that nerves talk to each other. When they do that, they release chemicals, those little uh, pink balls come across and they s allow one nerve to talk to another to send signals of pain. What marijuana does, that THC chemical is able to get into those areas where the nerves talk. These little green balls literally plug up the connectors between the nerves. So they slow down or inhibit or completely stop the ability of nerves to talk to each other and transmit pain and that brings you relief. So here's the big question. What's it like to live with the kind of pain that patients say is only relieved by a drug they cannot easily get? Talk show host Montel Williams knows firsthand. Montel Williams is an authentic American success story. He grew up on the rough side of Baltimore, then rose to become an Emmy award-winning talk show host, best-selling author, and entrepreneur. But 12 years ago, his life changed dramatically when Williams was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. I have been living with neuropathic pain in my lower extremities my face and my side, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, period, doesn't go away. Williams decided to use his celebrity to launch a very public crusade to find a cure for MS and legalize medical marijuana, a treatment he says has saved him from the crippling effects of his disease. The only thing that has kept me a contributing member of the society for the last 10 years is that I've used marijuana every single day. His advocacy for medical marijuana has put Williams in the spotlight and under the scrutiny of the law. In January, Williams was arrested at the Milwaukee airport and later fined for possessing a pipe used for smoking marijuana. But his arrest has not silenced him. Marijuana may not work for everyone, but what it has done for me is it's given me my life back a life like everybody else. Please welcome Montel Williams.
He is a very inspirational man. And I've seen firsthand the pain that you endure all the time that you're awake and probably even when you're asleep. What's it like to feel like a patient but to be treated like a criminal when you try to help yourself? See, what's really kind of crazy about this is that, you know, I spent 22 years in the United States military in two branches of our service, the Marine Corps and the Navy, supporting and defending this Constitution of the United States against all enemies foreign and domestic. I just came back from Afghanistan two weeks ago, went over and visited our troops there in the battlefield to make sure that somebody recognized that we still remember them. So, you know, I feel like this. If I'm defending this Constitution for all of us, why do I not have the right to the same rights that this government has given other people? Because I want to start right at the beginning with this. Today, you're, thank you. you're doing something today that nobody's attempted to do, and that's tell the truth. Let's, let's do that today, because I say this only to say to you that our federal government for the last 22 years has been distributing marijuana in a special program through the University of Mississippi, started with 20 patients, it's now down to four that are still alive, 16 of them have passed away. Every 17th of the month, our government sends out a canister of marijuana that we grow. Your taxpayer dollars pay for. So when you say, what does it feel like to be a criminal? I feel like if I put my life on the line and our government says it's okay to give it to four people, how dare you look me in the face and tell me I don't have a right to be paid free. So come on, guys. You know, I'm not asking for anything special.